yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, now. Hey, guy. Hey. Hey. That's, what, that's how I talk to Zim. Hey. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Wolf Done Podcast. I did a really long shot because I uh, I forgot I was pulling a shot. So this is like twice as much espresso than should be in here. Oh, you're going to be up for two and days it, straight. And it tastes pretty terrible. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome on in, everybody. Yeah, welcome to the premiere coffee podcast of this time. It smells delightful. Oh, I'm sure it does. But it tastes yeah. terrible. You're a little out of focus, too. I got to fix okay. that. Oh, uh, we got new life. mics. Look at it. Hey. It's not really a new mic. I just 3D printed some bullshit on but it. But it looks pretty, and that's what matters. Uh, Today, we're going to be going through all of our wrap-up of all, all, all the games we played. Yep, it's the end of the year, so the Xbox, Sony, Nintendo, and Steam have taken a page to Spotify because everybody's doing that and saying, this is what you did. This is this what year. you did. This is what you did. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say up front, my Nintendo, very embarrassing this year. I think I'm going to be pretty embarrassed by the whole thing. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't. I already took a peek at my Steam because it tell, it just tells you. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty embarrassing. I'm not even, even going to bother with uh, my Steam because I'm like, don't really touch it all that much. That's I'm just where, now like. That's where I thought I would play the most stuff. Right. But uh, it's looking weird. Yeah. It's looking weird. My Nintendo is going to be piss poor. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of them, I'm just curious how that's going to look there. Yeah. Um, you're going to find out just how much Spider-Man I've actually played, <laughs> which is not a lot. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, what else are we talking about? Oh, oh, the news that's been happening. It's, uh, it's leak season, apparently. Apparently. Is that? And apparently there's only one that people think is bad to look into. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can I say that name? What? Which one? That one. Oh, that one. Uh. Hey, man. Thanks for the prime. <laughs> I think you can. <laughs> no. You don't thanks, man. Don't want to risk it. <laughs> thanks, man, for the prime. Thank you so much. Uh. All right. Anyway, there's there's a whole lot of little things, but the big thing is uh the the he's stuff saying it's just BLC. Be put some periods, like man. bacon, lettuce, and cheese, or whatever. That's not no. Bacon, lettuce, and cheese is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Your name is disgusting. <laughs> um, all right, let's just start. Uh, I guess we have Xbox to start. Uh, I haven't really played much Xbox, so I'm curious uh, how this is gonna work. Okay, I'll I'll just jump into mine. I guess. All right, yeah, you do you first. Uh, 2023 year interview. There's me. That's me. There I am. Uh, lifetime gamer score seventeen thousand. Is that a lot? Uh, it felt like a lot. Somehow mine is more. It felt like a lot in the Xbox 360 days. Yeah. I played a grand total of thirty five hours on my Xbox. <laughs> you know, a lot of it's probably Game Pass. Will it tell me? Uh, it should just tell you the games. Period. Top gameplay month was August. What happened in August? Um, I don't know. I must have been trying some Game Pass yeah. bullshit. Uh, what else can we show here? Here's a, how you stack up with other players. You're in the top 40% of players for hours played. That's not very good. 45% of gamer score. And top 35% of players in achievements unlocked. That's not very good. Oh, Naraka Blade Point. That's what happened. I played a lot of Naraka Blade Point and I played it on Game Pass. I don't know what that is. That is a um how would you put it? It's it's a third person ninja style battle royale. Okay. So think Sek Sekiro, mm -hmm. but a battle royale. Got it's it. It's pretty good. Uh I haven't played since. Right. You're in the top ten percent of this game's most active players. That's pretty piss poor because I only played fifteen hours of that. It mm -hmm. felt like I played a lot more than that. Uh, and my gamer score is 135 out of 1,000? Damn. Uh, oh, and also Starfield. Remember Starfield? <laughs> I've, I've heard of Starfield. You know what? 11 hours of Starfield, way more than I thought. That's 11 more hours than I played. That's more than I thought I played of that game. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in the top 45% of that game. Hi-Fi Rush, only 7 hours, but that's a pretty short game. That's a short game, game yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, 25, top 25% of, uh, of people who have played that game. Mm -hmm. And that's it. 
that's all I got for Xbox. Okay. So pretty piss poor, but they're all going to be like that, I feel like. You want to show yours? Yeah, let's let's do well now. All right, I don't remember. <coughs> we did. We're doing a thing where we're yeah. sharing our screens. That's me. Oh, there hi, we go. as well. Hey, then hi. So yeah, there's my lifetime gamer score. Your icon is a lot better than mine. So mine is the original 360 avatar. So is mine. Is it? Yeah, I don't remember. And, oh, but yeah. You could tell because of how pixelated right. it is. So they actually like kept the app on Xbox One, and I just put them in a dynamic pose. And I didn't switch over to the new looking avatar. Oh, you can put dumb. it in. A, you can change the pose of yeah. the original avatar. Yeah. Okay. Because this is this is literally the Xbox 360 right. avatar. I haven't yeah. moved the pose or anything. Uh, and I'm in my Sonic Four shirt because that game is not bad. Okay. Uh, so this is my 2023 highlights: 47 hours played, 17 games. I there's no way in hell I played 17 games on Xbox this year. You probably just downloaded them. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my top month was February. Don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. I wish That's it a, told you yeah. like what the, the top game of February was. Cause, yeah, because then we'll we would know. Yeah. Um, games you play. So I'll, I'll just say like you'll see Squadrons and Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, and the Master Chief Collection come up. Those are just games I like booted up to make sure they're running properly on my Series X. Okay. It's not because I actually played those. And I don't think I booted up Metro 2033 or Mankind Divided for that matter. Yeah, I didn't mention the ones that I have on here. Uh, Apex Legends, I did not play a round of Apex. Yeah. Th that's definitely just opening it up to uh, see what runs I can tell you, good. I played Hitman 3, GoldenEye, uh, Black Ops Cold War, Sonic Frontiers, Insects. Um, I have not booted up Village... Uh, I booted up, Cy no, I did boot up Village, I booted up Cyberpunk, and I booted up Doom, and I booted up Resident Evil. These all games I booted up, not that I necessarily you played. You don't have any hours yeah. into it. What about uh, Star Wars? And again, I booted it up to see how it okay. ran on, because on, when I got the Series X, I was all excited. I'm like, what runs in 4K? And so I just booted shit up. You know what I have every year? Sonic Adventure 2 for the Xbox 360 arcade. I have that every year. Uh, well, this is apparently a Sonic-filled year for me, <laughs> not to spoil it. Uh, I have Call of Duty on here. I mm -hmm. did not play that through Xbox. I don't know no. how it's. I don't know how it's on here. Have, did you play Modern Warfare Two through Xbox? Because remember, there's that whole thing where like Modern Warfare Two kind of yeah. became Modern Warfare Three. That's probably. I it. don't know. I I didn't. Yeah. I didn't think I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. Well, anyway, here's how I stack up amongst other people. Also, top forty percent. Uh, Vowers top forty. Top twenty five percent of gamer score. Top thirty percent of achievements. Uh, my number one game of the year was Sonic Frontiers, which came out last year. That's weird. I, I guess don't... January. It came out late last year, so yeah. you're probably playing it. I January probably played it a lot this year, yeah. Maybe that's your February game. Maybe. I'm in the top 20% of most active players. My number two was Hitman 3. Still? You still playing that? No, I finished it. Did that came out? The, that came year? out a while ago. Yeah, it came out a while ago. That's yeah, what but I'm I never, I never actually played 3. I played oh, 1 and 2. I okay. finally got around to 3. Okay. It's great. It's fantastic. The whole series is great. Just get it. Um, so I'm glad I got to do that. You unlocked on September. Oh, yeah, because I played in the fall. Uh, and then number three was Sonic Generations. Like, I know I booted it up and I fussed around with it. I don't think I played eight hours of it this that's, year. That's that crazy. That has to be cumulative. Yeah. From like when I played on 360 to now. That's a pro that's an issue. Yeah. That's not. Because Sonic for Tears is like... Generations. Sonic Generations. Sonic Generations is maybe like a four hour game at most. Very strange. Yeah. That that's up there like that. But that's yeah. uh one of the ones that's upgraded for the uh yeah. for the new consoles. So that's so, messed up. Yeah, that's it. That's my Xbox. Not impressive. No, these the, all of these are not gonna be impressive. No. I'm curious about my PlayStation. I feel like this will be the shittiest one of yeah. all of them. I will say though, PlayStation has like the fanciest presentation out of all. Yeah, of them. this is well, I gotta I I gotta refresh that because yeah. is that that whoa. Oh, whoa! Let's find out. Did you play Call of Duty on the RG Ally or the Legion Go? I've been playing it on the Legion Go just because I have that set up. Yeah. What's Returnal doing here? January 31st, 2023. That was the first game you played this year. What? I must have played it. What came out early in the year? Oh, maybe the controller. The, uh, the new... Oh, uh, the Edge? Yeah, the Edge okay. controller. Uh, I must have been playing it to like futz around with that. Yeah. Um, partly because this game has 
uh, adaptive triggers. Yeah. You know, stuff to do with the adaptive triggers. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was some weird bullshit going on with the adaptive right. triggers. All right. Next, can I keep going? Yes. Oh, I got to go through a whole animation every time. Mm -hmm. Here are your big hitters in 2023. <laughs> this is sad. Uh, Demio is my most played game. What is Demio? It's... How do I put this? <laughs> it's Dungeons and Dragons. Nerd, okay. But um, it's ta it's a tabletop game. Oh! And it's in VR, you and you move you the pieces. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I played eight hours of that. Jesus Christ. And that ends up being my most played game on yeah. the PlayStation. Wow. Second would be Marvel Spider-Man 2. Right. With only five hours wow. played. <laughs> And then I got Destiny 2, which I played a decent amount of this year. Only mm -hmm. four hours, but still. Uh, three was Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes. Okay. Because uh, Wood was playing it, and it made me want to replay it. So I replayed it, and then I tried to get some more achievements in it. And uh, it's a lot harder than I remember. Yeah. And the last one's Re uh, Astro's Playroom, because I... That's one of my go-tos for, like, testing stuff out. Because right. it's so easy to just yeah. jump in and jump out. Astro's Playroom is a great game. It's a great game. Nobody, nobody talks about it. Didn't realize I beat it at all. Uh, role player, you spend 29% of your time leveling up, completing fetch quests, and saving the world once again. Yeah, I love role playing games. <laughs> uh, let's look at what you got up to. Yeah, Demio, I played five game sessions of that. Oh, five sessions in just February. Okay, I'm not going through this. And then here we go again. Call of Duty September. I, I booted up Call of Duty. I probably just downloaded it. Uh, right. Play Modern Warfare 2 or something. No, you know what I think it is? I think I was trying to remove it from my PlayStation because it kept always trying to update itself. Oh. A playlist for you role players. Oh, yeah. I would love Dragon Quest not, uh, what, 11? Yeah, that sounds really <laughs> up my alley. What a terrible list. Uh, I mean, uh, there's not a lot of data to go off. Yeah. This year, you played 27 hours of your PlayStation 5. All right, so what are we up to? 50 hours so far between yeah. the Xbox and the PlayStation? <laughs> Come on, we can, we can add it all up. Uh, fake gamer right we there. We can add only... it all up. <laughs> you spent 85.19% of game time playing 10 games. on your. Uh, what, is, what is that stat? It doesn't mean anything. You got 22 trophies. Okay. Okay. No platinum. I don't think I, I'm, I, there's no platinums that I get. Party Animal. You really partied it up with six parties this year. That's all Demio. When I was playing Demio. And that's it. What a year. Wow. What a year what it a was. Year. I can't believe Returnal yeah. is up there. Look at that. How many you think, hours you, of Returnal? You think you know a person. Weird. All okay. Right. Your turn. Okay. Let's find out. Let's boot up. And whoa. whoa. Oh, wow. Yours <laughs> is all messed up. Yeah. 14 games. First game I played this year was Roller Drome. I don't know if that's a good one. I don't know if I've talked about this game. That's Fucking a good one. rules. It's on Game Pass now. Mm -hmm. So you have no excuse. I really don't. Play it. I got to play that yeah, one. Yeah, it's so good. I love it. All right. Uh, Next. Where's the next yeah, you click the, There's like an arrow hidden on the right side. Yeah. Or I can just do this. For that all right here are your big hitters obviously spider-man 2 uh resident evil 4 resident evil 4 again <laughs> roller drome and astro's playroom i think what happened was because i was playing oh. re4 on ps4 okay. and when i got the ps5 i transferred over and it started counting the ps5 version of the game as a separate game but it's the same save <laughs> same save okay but like you see, one is 21 hours. That's the PS4 version. And then one is three hours. That's the PS5 yeah. version. No, I see. Okay. All right. That yeah. makes that, This all checks out. Yeah. You beat Spider-Man 2 35 hours? I platinumed Spider-Man 2. That's fucked up. I never platinumed. Platinum at 35 hours? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. You know why? Because like the, all the trophies weren't like dumb. They were all like reasonable. And like, of even like the, there weren't that many like fetch questy, fest, fetch questy ones. Mm -hmm. And the ones that were, was like a manageable size of things to collect. It wasn't like 
40 backpacks hidden across one like small area a thousand riddler trophies exactly yeah and i've done the i did all the riddler trophies in all the arkham games and it doesn't even give me a platinum <laughs> Thrill Seeker, you spend 97% of your game time on the edge of your seat, following your goal no matter the That's odds. That's so much cooler I like than the one that I got. Yeah, I like exciting shit. Yeah, I like... Uh, I don't like to slow down. Games I like is dumb supposed shit, to be apparently. rad. Okay, next. Uh, your year in play. Let's look at what you played month by month. January was Roller Drome. Nothing for February or March. And then... This is this is gonna be embarrassing because it's from here on it's just Resident Evil Four. It's just Resident <laughs> Evil Four. It's all just year. Resident Evil Four until Spider Man came out. All year Resident Evil Four. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. Keep in mind, I got I got two little ragamuffins running around. Ragamuffins. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's go to. Uh, right, let's, well, I'm not done. Oh, you're not done. No, I'm not done. Oh. Uh, this is, oh, they're suggesting more games for me to play because I'm a thrill seeker. Yeah, what, are, what Horizon? Horizon. Of I still haven't played would. Zero Dawn yet. I'm more interested in playing Far Cry 5 than I am in Far Cry 6. Is that weird? Because that just seems like a more interesting game to me. Far Cry 5 was the Midwest? Yeah. I think I, I played that one. It was, yeah. it was okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I played 3 and 4. They're all this seems like it has a better story. I heard that the Avatar game that Ubisoft just put out, which is basically... You know, it's a Far Cry game, but set in the Avatar world, mm -hmm. is better than the last few Far Cry games. Oh God, it doesn't look good either. It doesn't. <laughs> but like, what does that tell you? I didn't even know Ubisoft put it. Yeah, out. Uh, I played sixty-eight hours. Jesus Christ, get a life. <laughs> I like how it tells me sixty percent of that time was on the PS5, and then forty percent on the PS4, and then I do like the DualSense controller. All right, let's keep going. Wait, what does that have to do with it? Of course. What, I don't know. I don't know. What other one would you like? It's, it's a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got my first platinum trophy ever this year from Spider-Man 2. Cause it was oh, my God. That's your do. first one ever? ever? I don't care about this shit. Can you find out somewhere on the internet what platinums you have? Because I would like to know what I yeah, have. In your, um, in, your, in your profile, in your PlayStation profile. I got to find that. Yeah. Because I'd like to know. I, maybe I don't have any either. My my social style is Lone Wolf. Sometimes all you need is a single player game and some good snacks. That's true. I don't like to play with anybody. I started playing Gotham Knights recently, mm -hmm. and right when you booted it up, there was like an option like how you want to play. Who do you want to invite to your friend? Fucking like, no one. Yeah, I, I said that to no one. Go away. It's annoying in Starfield because you can also do that. Yeah. And but the whole premise of starfield is everybody you run into is like i'm coming with you and yeah. you're like no leave me alone <laughs> playstation stars whatever that shit is and what a year oh what a year what indeed. a year um in the chat uh Sc scarer says uh it says your controller color so it brought up the dual sense controller uh because it shows you your color but wait a minute I alternate between a purple one and the smiter and the Spider-Man one. Spider-Man? The Spider-Man one. And it showed me the white controller. Maybe uh Your favorite dual sense. Yeah, I don't own a white dual sense. Maybe the Spider-Man one comes up as white. Hmm. That that could be it. That's odd. That's uh That's uh, lazy. That is very lazy. Part. All right. All right. I don't know where to check for my platinum trophies. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go to friggin'. Uh... It's. I know it's in the app, so like I can show you later. In the oh, app I could. I could pull yeah. up my phone then. I'm gonna check out Nintendo. Yeehaw, baby. Mm -hmm. Wahoo. Uh, welcome. Here I am. There I go. Bob, welcome to your year in review, 2023. Your first game of 2023, Mario Maker. Uh, of course. Is that gonna be my most played game? Uh, you played 24 games, 130 total hours. That is way more than I thought. Yeah. That might have been more than last year. Oh, Tears of the Kingdom. That's why. Oh, uh, yeah. Most played games this year, Mario Maker, 31 hours. Tears of the Kingdom, 31 hours. That is more than I thought because I yeah. did not beat the game. Uh, game Boy Advance, 
Nintendo Switch Online, 17 hours. What did you play? Definitely Mario 3, the e-reader right. levels. I spent a long time on those. Apparently, I spent 17 hours on them. Uh, okay, and this just shows me the same information. Uh, your gaming trends, action, adventure, classic games, party, fighting, tennis. Fighting, I guess, is uh, Smash. Mm -hmm. um, you played most in May, 27 hours played. Where did I go in May? I know I brought my Switch on a flight and played a lot of uh, uh, Mario, the e-reader levels. That wasn't when you went to, that wasn't PAX, was it? No, I was on a flight. I didn't, I didn't fly to PAX. What was in May? Oh, that was Vegas. Oh. Okay. That was late. That was not May. What was your favorite game in 2023? Super Mario Maker 2? Or, oh, I have to pick one. Or Tears of the Kingdom? Or uh, Game Boy Advance games? Or Smash Brothers, which I have 16 hours played. Mario Wonder, this one. Mario Wonder. Nice pick. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> well, let me... Oh, now I, I want to read the rest of them, though. Nintendo 64, Breath of the Wild. I played three hours of Breath of the Wild. Switch Sports. Hell yeah, brother. Game Boy Advance. Uh, the fucking uh, F-Zero. Mm -hmm. 99. Keep talking, nobody explode. Okay, it, this, this goes on forever. I'm just going to pick... Mario Wonder Baby, only 15 hours. But I guess that's pretty recent. Yeah. Download your stats. Favorite game in 2023, Super Mario Wonder. Uh okay, that's it. That's really it. All right. That was your that was your 2023. I got 789 gold points and I got 460 platinum points, baby. There you Let's go. fucking go, baby. All right. Redeem your points for rewards? No, thanks. Okay, let's get started. Here we go. Here, here we go. Should I reduce motion? Because my computer sucks. Here we go. You're in review. Let's take it from the top. Your first game was N64. What did you play? Goldeneye? When, yeah, when did Goldeneye come out? Was it January? I don't remember. All right. Here we go. These are, these are my top games that I played. It's all the the retro stuff, <laughs> and I'll tell you. And I'll that tell you, is that is awesome. Well, let me tell you why. There's I, not a single other game there. Well, let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because most of the time, I was just booting up the apps to make sure I claim the new games that get added. You don't have to claim them. They're just I know, there. But I want to make sure they're there. You just want to see the yeah, little thing exactly. turn around. Okay. That's it. Six games, games, one hour total. <laughs> The most played game this year, I played one hour on N64, probably GoldenEye, less than an hour in Game Boy, and less than an hour in Game Boy Advance. Yeah, you're literally just going in there to, to see the game am. go boom, yeah. boom, Yeah. So, my gaming trends, 100% classic games, right there. That, 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 no other information Most at played all. <laughs> in February, that's, that's probably when GoldenEye came out. Uh, yeah. I am trying to find that information. What was your favorite game? January 26th, yeah. I think. Or was okay. that when it was announced? No, it was announced a while ago. January 26th, that okay. is when it came out. Okay, there you go. There's my Nintendo this year. Not not fun. Very embarrassing, actually. It didn't ask you to pick your favorite game that oh, you played? It, it did. I picked N64. Okay. Because it was, that's had Goldeneye in it. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, that's it for you then, right? You yeah, don't have a Steam one. I don't, no, I just started playing you know, Steam You should games. look. I put it in the keep. Maybe, oh. maybe, maybe something will come up. This is Wolfwood's Steam Year in Review. That's right. My name is Wolfwood. Because I liked anime. <laughs> um, no, I, I got your Steam in Review. <laughs> oh, I, when you click on it, it's mine. Yeah. Okay, whoops. This year, you played a lot of games for the first time, ra racking up quite a few hours. Uh, 30 games played, 22 new games. Uh, this is a weird layout for this. Yeah. 71% with controller, 29% play with mouse and keyboard. Call of Duty, uh, is the most played, I guess. 25% of playtime, 38 sessions. That's crazy because that only just came out. Yeah. Sonic Superstars, I guess, is number two with, uh, 9% of my playtime. It doesn't tell me... How long I've played. Uh, Celeste is number three with 
play time with 41 sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, stack your year against the rest of the Steam community. You unlocked 77 achievements. The Steam median is 16. Holy shit. You played 30 games and the Steam median is four. Your longest streak was eight days. Uh, Steam medium five. Uh, 46% the percentage of games you played that were new releases. Okay. 9% of the games you played were, uh, that were released. 9%, the percent, 9%, the percentage of games... The average player on Steam played that were released in 2023. The thing is, people who play Steam games play one game. Yeah. And that's the game that they... Yeah. You are what you play. The spider graph shows the f- kinds of games you spend a lot of time on. So we got a lot of precision platformer and a lot of 2D fighter. What's a 2D fighter, though? Street Fighter? I didn't play. Oh, yes. Yeah. I did play a decent amount of Street Fighter. Um, that's really it. Action roguelike. Uh, new friends added, badges earned, workshop, item subscriptions. Okay. Take a closer look at your top played games. Call of Duty. There you go. Only November and December, and it became my top played game. That's crazy. Honestly, Valorant is my most played game this year, but <laughs> it doesn't show up on any of these because yeah. it's a completely different launcher. Um, Sonic Superstars, October and November, not, uh, 9%. Uh, it doesn't tell me how many hours. Hmm. That's upsetting. Why would they do that? Uh, and then Celeste, and then Neon White. I play. I I went back and played a little bit of Neon White because right. uh, I felt like beating it because I, I I hadn't beat it yet, and I finally did. Counter Strike Two. I jumped into that again. Wish I never did. <laughs> uh, I mostly played games in November. I did play a lot of games in November. Uh, also June. You played on more than one device, uh, Steam Deck and Windows. Okay. But when, that's just, I yeah, mean, yeah. that doesn't include all of the devices. I have so many of these games downloaded on so many different devices. Right. Uh, you played on, on a Steam Deck, mostly Sonic Superstars and Street Fighter and Resident Evil 4. A little bit of Sonic Frontiers, mm-hmm. a very little bit of uh, Armored Core, Fires of Rubicon. Got it. 56% of your playtime was with a controller. Uh, Call of Duty, Celeste, Blasphemous. Blasphemous, I keep forgetting, is one of the best games of the year. And yeah. I keep forgetting that that, that, that happened this year. Uh, and then that's it. Right. Oh, and Bomb Rush Cyberpunk didn't show up at all, but I played a decent oh, amount wow. of that too. And Gravity Circuit. There were so many games I played. I wish this gave me hours because I probably spent the most hours playing Steam games yeah. if you don't include how much Valorant I played. <laughs> Do you did did you pull uh, a Steam collection up? No, I got something uh, better though. Uh-oh. I got our Spotify wrapped up. Oh, let me click on that. Let's. Uh, this is this is all you all you people out there in TV land. That's right. We have uh, our Spotify wrapped. So yeah. you people who listen to us, uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. This is all your information. In 2023, people were really, really feeling what we did. Wow. Is this going to be acting like we're a band? I hope so. That'd be so cool. <laughs> Bands are cool. Ready? To, ready? Let's take it from the top. Speaking of the top, your top episode was Switch 2, now without Joy-Con Drift. Wolf Den Podcast, episode 145. Oh, what a clickbait title. Yeah. <laughs> It just goes to show you, kids, clickbait works. It clickbait works. It was streamed 388% more than your average episode. Holy shit. Yeah. Let's hear it for new fans. 60% of your listeners discovered you in 2023. That's pretty. That's, that's a good. Lot. That's a we lot. Like yeah. that. That's good. That mean that just means growth. That shows growth. Tears of the Kingdom might be the greatest game of all time. Wolf 10 Podcast 131 really brought them in. 9% of your new listeners started here. Is that Tears of the Kingdom wave we were riding? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's another clickbaity title. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, I yeah. thought it was the greatest game of How all time. How does it feel to have, been, have gone global? We really are the true Mr. Worldwides. <laughs> United States was your top country. We're not global then. <laughs> Liars. <laughs> 
We were streamed in 73 countries, though. Okay. Dale. <laughs> I've only been to, like, four. <laughs> uh, any good podcast this year? Yeah, most new listeners in the United States, UK, Canada, Australia, and Mexico. That, that all makes sense. Yeah. Uh, new listeners have good taste. What else are they into? Let's find out. Anybody into some sex stuff? Boys. <laughs> listeners' top genres were leisure, comedy, and sports. Sports? Get out of here, Show you yourself jocks. at once. And get out. Dad. <laughs> Listeners' top music genres were rock, pop, and rap. That makes sense. Okay. That, that, that's, that's literally all of them. That's <laughs> all of the genres. Well, there's not, there was no country listeners, no R&B. There's no, like, weird shit. <laughs> Your listeners definitely told their friends about you. You better have. I don't say like, share, and subscribe for my health. <laughs> Your podcast was shared direct link. Uh, fifty nine percent just sent the link. WhatsApp, like I use WhatsApp mainly for text messaging. I'm always surprised that it's technically a social media network. There's like a tab. There's like yeah. a Discover tab, right? Yeah, yeah. Like Snapchat has one, but that's the same. It's like yeah. a chat app, and it has like a Discover tab. And I'm only using WhatsApp because a lot of my friends have Android phones, and it really bothers me. Tell them to suck it up. They I, they might not have to use that soon i would hope so because it would make my life so much easier if they just buy iphones someone in the chat uh where'd you go uh i omega says uh riot sent out their valorant data is there a riot wrap-up i would love to see that uh our most shared episode was this is what the ps5 slim looks like episode 141 oh, okay that makes sense too you know I, it's, it's That's amazing not how really clickbait though we literally showed what the slim but looks it, I, like i think it's interesting how that's the most shared where we're showing you what the ps5 slim looks like through spotify and oh, yeah. audio <laughs> podcast service that's a very good point yeah they do do video podcasts now but we don't upload the video to there no uh i don't want to no. I, w I want people to have to go to youtube podcast rating is 4.9 I'm guessing out hey, of five. Hey, that's good. Yeah. Who's, the, who's the old dad? Yeah. It's probably dad. Who gave us a gut? Yeah, dad's giving us a one. Where's the yeah. net yet? Yeah. This year, your listeners did more than just listening. They got talking. Oh, no. Oh, because I published 19 polls and they were, oh, they received a decent amount of votes. Look at that. We got to do more polls. I do have to do we more always polls. To it's do hard polls. coming up with like clever, funny polls. And then it's hard to like, oh, it's not hard. I'm just, I'm just lazy. I don't remember to like review them at the top of the show. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We yeah. got we to make a note of that. You created 23 Q&As, which received 44 responses. I'm going to put an asterisk on that because a lot of times I just leave it on the default. What did you think of the show? 44 responses in total? Yeah. That's not that many. Yeah. Oh, pop quiz, hot shot. What episode got the most audience engagement? Uh, Here's the king. You think of Sears of the Kingdom? Uh... Oh, wait, every retro Nintendo Switch? Yeah. No, no. Tears? Tears, yeah, definitely Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, oh, correct. Yeah, listeners joined in 144 times. Yeah, they also 114 times. already said it was the most popular yeah. one. Are you a gardener? What does that mean? It's going to be a joke? Because your podcast saw some nice growth this year. That's dumb. 42, 40, uh, what was it? 42% increase in listeners, 45% increase in streams, 58% increase in followers. Hey, growth. Growth. Like the thing on my back. We need more of that. Can't forget to give a shout out to your biggest fans. You're a top 10 podcast for 2,412 people. Holy shit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I don't have an email about my my uh my Riot Games. We're account. a top five podcast of one thousand seven hundred and seventy one fans. Okay, that's good. We're getting we're getting higher. Yeah. That's most of them then. It's like yeah. 
I was just going to be how many people are, we're number one. 379. Hell yeah. We're, we're 379 people's reason for opening Spotify. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, top fans listen to you three times more than your other listeners. That's because they're better than other listeners. 60, <laughs> 63% are returning listeners. That's right. And let's zoom out. What a year. Look at that. What a year. Yay. Yay. Thanks, guys. All about us. People in the chat wanted us to show our Spotify rap. Mine is a lot of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. Yeah. Patty whatever. Uh, Patty. I don't know. Patsy Klein? Maybe. That's what mom likes to listen to. My, I share, my mom uses my yeah. Spotify more than I do. And like, you got to remember, I have small kids at home. So it's a lot of Frozen and Moana. And I, I See, I, on my Spotify, it used to be Frank Sinatra, Moana. Yeah. And every once in a while, there'll be like a Norma Jean or like a, a, a J-pop or some yeah. shit. This year, dominated by mom dominated my spotify yeah although this year my daughter added dolly parton to her repertoire and oh that's nice when uh when you do the ending uh sometimes artists will like say a little thank you and dolly said thank you for listening to her oh that was nice i need somebody to link the fucking valorant thing if so they there find we go because i can't i can't find it at all all right should i close out of discord because like yeah there's like a jet engine here's right a jet now. engine you can you can close out of it uh let me Click back in my screen. You can completely quit out of it. Well, I'm going to keep it up for the info. So right, right, right. Uh oh, we got. Well, let's let's read some notifications here. We've been okay. ignoring you people. Um, this is all about us. It's all about us. Edward Bova, thanks for the 14 months. Uh, Bob, don't forget to talk about the job listing reveals. Bandai Namco working on both 2D and 3D action games for Nintendo. Um, I don't know if we have that. It's not. Yeah, we don't have I that. I gotta be honest with you. I don't think that's news. I mean, if there's just job lists, we know that Bandai Namco has like a an internal team that just does Nintendo games, and you know, just because they have a job listing for like a style doesn't necessarily mean anything because Nintendo does all styles. Yeah, I mean, we know Bandai Namco is probably working on Nintendo games, mm -hmm. so. Working on 2D and or 3D games yeah, doesn't really tell us anything. Yeah. It doesn't really narrow it down at all. Nick Tendo, thanks for the 11 months. I wonder if Nintendo counts paused slash idle time in the total hours. Oh, you mean because of Breath of the Wild? Because I had Breath of the Wild on there. I, I <laughs> It's a screenshot, the thing that I use. Jay Flam, thanks for the 52 months. Do you use your Steam Deck the most for Windows handhelds? Honestly, lately I've been using the Lenovo. Because I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty. And that's why. Okay. Uh, Charlie Fenn, thank you for the four months. Popping in quickly to resub with Prime. Been a while. Seems I usually just comment on YouTube due to the time difference in the UK. I feel like Bob is fed up of saying my name now. But happy holidays, you guys. Well, thank you, yeah. Charlie Fenn. Why, why would I be fed up saying Oh, you're just get you're easy. To I'm, get fed I'm up easy with. to yeah. get. I'm yeah, easy to, to get fed up. Uh, all right. Uh, let's. Oh yes, there's so much more about uh, wrap ups for this year. Like your wrap ups, how much you've looked up <laughs> on Pornhub for uh, game characters. Earlier this month, Pornhub released its annual and very detailed roundup of what kind of content was most popular and most sought after on its massively successful site. In all of this data, as as has been the case for the last few years, it was a large selection, it was a large section dedicated to video games. Last year, Fortnite was at the top of the list with Overwatch in second. This time around, though, Genshin Impact slipped out of the top three and was replaced by Minecraft. Further data what? provided by Pornhub revealed that uh, which specific video game characters people were searching for the most in 2023. Chun-Li chopped topped the list overtaking names like Tifa from Final Fantasy and Lara Croft from Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider. But weirdly, according to Pornhub's data, most people were looking for Chun-Li from Fortnite, 
not Street Fighter, the series where she first appeared in. Although fuck? Ryu and Chun-Li were added to Epic's popular Battle Royale in 2021, it's still kind of weird. To get this data, Pornhub says it collected searches that included a character name and a video game title. This was done to avoid uh, counting searches for porn stars who may have similar names. Anyway, here's the top 10 list of the most searched uh, characters on Pornhub. Chun-Li from Fortnite. <laughs> Tifa from Final Fantasy, Diva from Overwatch, Lara Croft, uh, Lady Dimitrisk from Resident Evil 8. That's the uh, only one I understand. Yeah. Sonic <laughs> from of Sonic the, the Hedgehog. Hedgehog. Uh, Ada Wong from Resident Evil, Mario from Mario, Widowmaker from Overwatch, and Mercy from Overwatch. I also kind of understand Mario. He had a movie this year. Right. And everything. And I understand Sonic because those people are fucking weird. So... Imagine this, though, like, if somebody wanted to search Captain Falcon, mm -hmm. they would probably say Captain Falcon, Smash, Smash Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. yeah. But Chun-Li, I mean, Fortnite. <laughs> but I mean, like, they still put out Street Fighter games. They put out a Street Fighter game this year. Yeah. But, like, did. more people know her from fucking Fortnite. It's a more popular game. Yes, but... I think they got rid of uh, the Street Fighter characters from the storefront, too. Like, I don't know, I even know if you could buy... Uh, so them anymore. They do do that. They do like take characters out and I don't um, I, I don't, don't know. know how it works. I have not opened I've been Fortnite. tempted to play like recently for some weird All my friends reason. started playing it yeah. again and I said no thank you. Yeah. I don't know if I'm I don't know. I'm too old to do that. Can't do it. And again, I don't play. I don't like playing with people. I want to be alone. Yeah, I mean you could solo, but the it kind of sucks. Yeah. Battle Royale solo kind of. Yeah. Uh so there you go. You guys are sick and twisted and weird. Yeah. Also, you don't know where Chun Li's from. Also, you don't know probably where because from. she debuted in like '92, which is like back before a lot of you were born. Sure. Uh, okay. Wait, hold on. We we actually didn't look too deep into the games that were that <laughs> okay. were given out. Uh, we got Pokemon. Atomic Heart is pretty high up there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what else? Grand Theft Auto Five is pretty deep. Sims Four, Skyrim <clears throat> is still. Making the list. Okay. Baldur's Gate 3 is pretty low on the list. Detroit Become Human? I guess there's... Really? There, I guess there's some fetish there. Yeah. Because they're robots. Yeah. Uh, Among Us is still <laughs> up there. Uh, and Cuphead is the very last one. Wow. The Legend of Zelda is pretty low, too. And that also came out this year. Very yeah. strange. Very strange. Again, you guys are weird. Uh, let's talk about the... Insomniac leaks, how yes. much we can even talk about them. Uh, this is per Eurogamer. Detailed plans revealing the future projects of Sony-owned Spider-Man developer Insomniac have been published online, stolen from the company by hackers. Uh, the file includes a project roadmap for the next decade and beyond, including an array of unannounced projects, plus production details, art assets, and personal information on Insomniac employees. Insomniac suffered a data breach last week with ransomware group um, Resiad uh, demanding 50 Bitcoin, the equivalent of $2 million, within a week to avoid the data being published publicly. Now, seven days later, the group has gone through with its threat. Um, as first reported by Cyber Daily, the leak, tro the leak trove of data included 1.3 million files and over 1.6 terabytes of data. This includes private messages from the company's Slack and employee details, including files related to companies hiring and firing. Uh, a spokesperson for the hacker group told Cyber Daily, the hack was specifically targeted Insomniac to demand money as a high-profile game developer would likely be an easy target. Sony is yet to respond to the leak, though last week acknowledged reports that Insomniac Games has been the victim of a cybersecurity attack. We are currently investigating the situation, Sony said at the time in a statement to Eurogamer. Uh, we have no reason to believe that any other SIE or Sony division has been impacted. Uh, files from the leak are now spreading across the internet and are being poured over on Reddit and social media. Uh, all right. And then next, they detail out their schedule of like upcoming games. And here, here's where I pause to uh, discuss the moral implications of reporting on leaks. Yeah, so uh, 
it's a little weird because this one uh people seemed really uh averse to uh looking into the leaks here usually yeah. uh game companies get leaks all the time right this particular leak people seem like it's immoral to look into um and i think part of that is because people like insomniac so much and also it seems like insomniac hasn't really been affected by mass industry layoffs and stuff okay it seems like insomniac is in people's good graces right so the fact that uh it was broken into like this uh people uh have some you know i guess empathy yeah but also it was a ransomware attack yeah i think that's a big part of it the fact that this was explicitly malicious yeah like these like this group went in and said like we are stealing this shit from you give us money now and then they went ahead and released everything anyway. I think also too the fact that they released a lot of personal information and employee information, in addition to like gameplay information of yeah. stuff, like really adds to like the the sympathy towards Insomniac. Also too, they did release a lot of like game, uh, unpolished early beta gameplay footage of Wolverine and some other stuff, and you know that it's it's the kind of footage that like is not a flattering first look. Yeah, you know, you don't want to present like unfinished assets. You want to present like something close to presentable. And it's still a ways out. Yeah, from what I understand. I did see, I saw, I saw some of the leaks on Twitter because it was kind of unavoidable. Mm -hmm. And you know, it. I'm not saying it looked bad, but it looked unpolished, and it looked like a, what you expect a Wolverine game to look like. A dude with claws slashing at people. Like, what yeah. more do you want? But I'm seeing the comments like, "This looks like a t shitty asset flip on Steam." And like it's it's a Wolverine running around a gray unfinished environment. Yeah. Like they're literally building the game. You were this is why game companies don't want you to see how the sausage is made. Yeah. Because you like a lot of people just assume you hit the make a game button and that's it. Also because uh a lot of game design is hidden behind the pretty the prettiness. Right. And all of the like particle effects and mm -hmm. all the cool shit that you're doing. And really you boil it down to uh uh, mash this button and then mash this button. Yeah. <laughs> like, once you see past that, you can, you know, start seeing a game for what it is. Yeah. And, and a lot of games start off a big gray environment with a guy, you know, yeah. running around. So people aren't going to want to yeah. see that. Uh, the level of detail in the leak is eye opening and near unprecedented with game budgets, sales forecasts, and revenue sharing plans for the studio's lucrative Marvel licensing deal laid bare. Uh, file show Insomniac sketching out the possibility of splitting Spider-Man 3's single player story into two parts released over consecutive years with details of cost and predicted sales. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that like they're working on Spider-Man 3. I mean, yeah. the, the game hints at that. The game sells like gangbusters. I also heard that we finally got some word on what sony's first party titles sold recently yeah like, uh digital sales versus physical sales. yeah that was we usually part of don't leak. hear a lot about yeah. uh, uh digital sales um yeah that was all part of that leak. yeah and that's just cool information yeah apparently ratchet and clank really didn't sell very well i think ratchet, it's, i think it failed i, th I think it Ra cost uh, money. ratchet and clank didn't um i think didn't profit Apparently, Sunset Overdrive, which they made for Microsoft like years ago, really didn't make any money. Really? Yeah, it, it barely made a dent. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know how I feel. I mean, you, you know, the first thing I I did today when I heard that people were that they didn't want to cover this leak, the first thing I did was look up how many layoffs Insomniac did, yeah. and apparently they really haven't been doing mass layoffs or yeah. anything. So I think that they're one of uh. For now, they're one of the good, the good ones. Yeah. Um, cause I was, cause I was like, why are people, you know, upset that this billion dollar company is, is, you know, got hacked and had ransom against them. But I, I understand now people's personal information got. Yeah. Leaked stuff, I, so. Again, too. I think it's like the, the malicious intent of it. If this was like, you know, just someone accidentally leaving, you know, a file open on a computer and it you know getting out there that's one thing but like this is these are people like actively attacking and demanding money demanding bitcoin the worst kind of money didn't they do this for grand theft auto i mean they leaked the trailer like they leaked the trailer oh, yeah. recently but well, someone else leaked gameplay before yeah i think yeah. before the trailer i i thought they i thought 
they hacked Rockstar and uh, held things for ransom. But I don't remember if ransom was a part of it. But uh, nothing happened. I think it might. I know have been the, fake. the trailer leaking early was because like I think an employee's son like got his hands on it. I heard they uploaded it to YouTube, and uh, you know, there's thousands of people that work at Google. Yeah, <laughs> so, and they all have access to that stuff. Remember when so. Grand Theft Auto Five uh, Six was released? No, and they hated it because it was clearly early development. Now they love it after the trailer. Oh, you mean the the trailer, the gameplay footage leaking? The thing yeah. we we're just talking about. Yeah, in September of last year, a user known as Teapot Tuber Hacker published ninety videos to GTA forum showing fifty minutes of in of work in progress game footage. Um, it was confirmed with sources at Rockstar that the footage was genuine, and The Guardian reported it was from several stages of development, uh, with videos about a year old. Uh, f- the hacker claimed uh, to be behind the Uber security breach from earlier in the week. They said that they downloaded the files directly from Rockstar's internal Slack groups and claimed the, uh, to possess source code, assets, and internal builds of Grand Theft Auto 5 and 6, which they threatened to publish. Oh, and then they found and arrested the guy, right? Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, and the the trailer leaked because somebody's son like posted it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody's son posted a low quality version on Twitter, and then in response, Rockstar's like, "Okay, fine, here it is." Well, that guy's fired. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of leaks, uh, hey, you want to see Luigi from Super Mario 64? This isn't a leak necessarily. This is like, I call. So I watched this video. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's just a, a video of some event from 1995 Japanese Space World show. Yeah. Um, it was at the event. They were showcasing Super Mario 64, and there was one trailer that was showing on an old CRT that showed Luigi entering the world. Yeah. In a really bizarre-looking world. It looks like a Sonic uh, a bonus level. It does, yeah. And Luigi kind of just floats into, yeah. into the frame. And that's that's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, if authentic, it's the first documented time Luigi has been seen in the N64 game outside of a high-profile 2020 leak of classic Nintendo game files, which included a model of the character. Luigi was originally intended to appear as a second playable character in the game, uh, according to a 1996 interview with Shigeru Miyamoto. We need uh, the ROM for that. We need to we need to see how this actually worked. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure this was just... Uh, like a prototype. I know, but I want to know what you could have done with a second character in the world. Like, how would it have worked? I'm just imagining, like... The camera zooms out as you run away from it. Or, like, other. a split screen thing, honestly. Like, that's, like, the easiest way to do it. I, I need to know what... I need to know what it played like. What, yeah. what it was intended to play like before they took it out. Yeah. Because right now, there's, like, ROM hacks where you can play multiplayer and stuff, and they're weird. They're, yeah. Like, things work in a weird way i'd like to know what nintendo intended for you to mm-hmm. do in the world together oh no slight echo happening with will oh it was no. very brief but there okay well okay i put a noise gate on so it's supposed to it, hopefully when that shit happens it goes away pretty quick um yeah so this was a it's on you it's on youtube mm-hmm like a 25 minute long video of uh space world japan 1995 it's actually pretty interesting uh they're just talking to kids and uh it like interviewing kids and all the kids are going like oh it's fun <laughs> hooray yeah that's literally they're just going it's fun uh it's cool yeah, yeah i like it um anyway that's that all right i moved this up because it's still going on about leaks okay and this one actually goes into like this article at least actually goes into story detail. Now this is leaked. interesting. Now why don't we care about this? About leaking this? I know. Well I mean I think people care but they're more like reacting to like what the story plot is. Mm-hmm. And I like I didn't I think I know what it is and I'm not really surprised by what it is. Also I feel like it's just it has to do with the game's title. Yeah, I saw a tweet that said, it's called Kills the Justice League. What did you expect? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, significant Suicide Squad killed the Justice League story spoilers are now online following an apparent leak stemming from a recent closed alpha test. The off delayed game uh, is an open world co op action title that lets you that lets up to four players play as Harley Quinn, King Shark, Deadshot, and Captain Boomerang. Audio from a key story cutscene is now online showing the fate of one of of one important character as well as a video and images confirming the return of characters from developer Rocksteady's uh, Batman Arkham series of games. Uh, is this, this is not in that universe, right? It is. It is in the Arkham yes. universe. Okay. Um, I'll skip to f- down. To, I'll skip the spoiler section down to Rocksteady responded with a statement on Twitter, calling the leak disappointing and urging fans not to spread the spoiler. We look forward to players uh, experiencing the story we've created in Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League once the game launches in the new year. Uh, We hope everyone can play the game and feel each moment of the narrative for themselves. It is very disappointing to see details being shared ahead of the game's release, so we can only argue, we can only urge you to try to avoid spoilers where you can. Uh, Please try not to impact the enjoyment of other players by posting spoilers. Uh, I'm going to spoil it for myself because I have no intention of ever playing this game. I mean, I'm going to play it, but like not at launch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay, weird. Uh, That's like not, who even cares? Like not important. That's not an important story beat, I don't think. All right, I'll... Yeah, fuck it. I'll just look at it now. Oh, We're Wood not... was streaming. Oh, look at that. Oh, thanks for the raid, Wood. Somebody in the chat said, Wood is finished. But he meant streaming. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what happened? I can't, what take, happened? I can't take any more YouTube cancellations. Yeah, at this Jesus. Point. What has he done? Especially when, like, you personally know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> no more of that. Yeah. No more of the people we know yeah. doing anything bad. Right, guys? <laughs> anyway was there anything else about- no, that was it that was it okay. yeah they said wood just finished reading isn't a thing here no yeah i don't read i've never read before. uh all right we got uh jake the bad snake thanks for the seven months hi wolf bros have any of you guys played final fantasy 7 remake and if so are you excited for rebirth i played a very little bit of final fantasy 7 remake not into it no no i have a friend who's like who bought a ps5 just for because he's excited for rebirth uh so he played through remake again and uh integrate and whatnot so like i know he's pumped for it okay but not me yeah couldn't be me i i would be interested in it if it was just a, a regular ass remake but apparently final fantasy 7 remake is a remake of like the first third of the game and then it yeah. ends in a way that Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is going to be something completely fucking different. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. So I, I did hear that they broke it up into three games. I yeah. know I have no idea how they did that. Yeah, I know no, it, they didn't just break it up into three games. They they're changing what a remake is. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's kind of like what they did with the Scott Pilgrim anime where like the first episode is a remake of like that section of the movie and the the comic and then the next eight episodes is something completely fucking different yeah. um bob why does your mic have a seemingly unnecessary xlr 90 degree adapter but wills does not this has bothered me for some time now. <laughs> the real questions uh because i used this on my desk setup and i didn't feel like buying a second one uh also it's like it depends on how you use the mic. It kind of sticks out, so it's a little annoying. But I'd rather have it like this than how Will has it. How it's uh, it kind of bunches up. Mm. The way the SM7B microphone is one of the worst designed microphones. <laughs> that uh, it's one of the, it's the most overrated design of a microphone, right? Because you have the stupid little XLR adapter pointing straight down right next to where you mount it to something yeah so you're mounting it to this mic stand and it's gonna get bunched up and all the cable's gonna get all fucked up here so i have the 90 degree angle to prevent that but then you then it's easy to like bump the thing against you so i I felt weird giving this adapter to will so that he has to bear that burden too um but other than that the sm7b sucks because the stupid wire that's hanging off here 
I, yeah. we, I already killed two of them for no reason. They just die. It's four hundred dollars for this stupid microphone. That's, yeah. Anyway, uh, also you need a cloud lifter because they're so quiet. It's it's a shitty microphone. Don't buy one of these. Yeah. Um. There's another question. Oh, great white trash. Thank you for the eight months. Garlic OS is out for the RG three five XX plus. I don't think it is. I think it's an alpha and it's like unusable. <laughs> Has it made it out of alpha? Because that'll be something worth talking about. The original author was the one who wanted the Scott Pilgrim anime to be told with a different story slash way. Yeah. Uh, Brian Lee O'Malley uh, wanted to do an, the anime and he wanted to do something different. And right to do so. Because, you know, the movie, like, adapted the f- books so well to begin with. Mm-hmm. You get the cast of the movie to do the cartoon, you might as well do something different. Did you watch the cartoon? I did. It was really good. I have to watch it. Very funny. Um, it is not, as uh, Barbara Bruff says, uh, sucked. It did not suck. I have heard nothing but great things about it. It is great. It's just way different. It's very different. Uh, all right. Also... Let's talk about The Last of Us. Yes. Uh, update on The Last of Us Online. We realize many of you have been anticipating the news about the project we've been calling The Last of Us Online. There is no easy way to say this. We made the difficult decision to stop development on that game. We know this news will be tough for many, especially our dedicated Last of Us faction community uh, who have been following our multiplayer ambitions uh, ardently. But we're equally crushed at the studio as we were looking forward to putting it in, our ha- in your hands. Uh, We wanted to share with you some background of how we came to this decision. The multiplayer team has been in pre-production with this game since we were working on The Last of Us Part 2. Crafting an experience we felt was unique and and had tremendous potential. As the multiplayer team iterated on their concept for The Last of Us Online during this time, their vision crystallized, the gameplay got more refined and satisfying, and we were enthusiastic about the direction in which we were headed. In ramping up to full production, a massive, the massive scope of our ambition became clear. To realize and support The Last of Us Online, we have to put all of our studio resources behind supporting post-launch content for years to come, severely impacting development on future single-player games. So we had two paths in front of us, become a solely live-service game studio or continue to focus on single-player narrative games that have defined Naughty Dog's heritage. That's bullshit. We are immensely proud of everyone at the studio that touched this project. The learnings and investments in technology from this game will carry into how we develop our projects and will be invaluable in the direction we head as a studio. We have more than one ambitious brand new single player game that we are working on at Naughty Dog and we cannot wait to share more about what comes next when we are ready. Until then, we are thankful for your community support. That's such bullshit. You think so? Yeah, I mean, it... If you released it and it was good and successful, then it would be worth putting the effort into it for post-launch stuff. See, I don't know if I agree with that because it has become kind of a trend in the industry Mm -hmm. where once you do a quote-unquote live service game, like what The Last of Us Online was going to Mm be, that becomes all you do. You look at look at respawn. It doesn't have it doesn't have to. Do it doesn't that. have to be. But like that's that, everybody's biggest criticism of respawn is that they didn't they didn't have to do that. They could just keep making the other game too. Well, Titanfall two didn't sell, so mm-hmm. then they did Valorant, and now that's all they do with the occasional Apex, Apex Legends, Apex Legends, and with the occasional Jedi Survivor, for good measure. The the problem here is that they already made a lot of the game right already did that work but so now they did all of it for nothing well not for nothing like they could still use what they learned in like a future release but i you know i get what they're saying because like once you become a live service studio it's very hard to break out of that uh look at look at what happened with bioware with anthem that was going to be an always online game and like that failed catastrophically. Now they don't really know what to do with themselves. Yeah, there's a that's lot. The, that's the thing. Like if it fa- if Last of Us Online failed, then it like then Naughty Dog is screwed. And if Last of Us Online would have been successful, then would have it would have also been screwed because they would have had to keep pouring their resources into making that game viable. 
Epic has not put out a game other than Fortnite since Fortnite came out. I think that uh, it doesn't have to be that scope. But also, you're Naughty Dog, and it's The Last of Us. They could get help from another studio to, to, to get it past the goal line. Uh, they're Naughty Dog. They're very, like, they've become very, like, auteur-driven, where, like, Naughty Dog makes Naughty Dog games, and no yeah. one else is allowed to make Naughty Dog games. The, the, the problem is that this is supposed to be part of The Last of Us 2. Right. And then they're like, nah, we can make it its own game. And now they're like, nah, we should have we should have just had it part of The Last of Us. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's something that I found interesting. Like, Last of Us Part 1 had a multiplayer component. It was just yeah. a part of the game. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, your multiplayer component is not just a part of your game. It's a whole separate game. GTA Online, Halo Infinite this potential i think it had a lot of potential i I think it could have been a real but i don't know because like people don't play the last of us for the multiplayer last of us is not known for its multiplayer it's known for its single player yeah but but the the multiplayer was very good in the the first one i didn't play that much of it but it was it might have been very good but like that's not why you go back to the last of us you go back to last of us for its single player campaign no, but if they release the multiplayer like a couple of months after launch, it, I would open the game up again to check it out for sure. But it sounds like it was going to be a completely separate thing. Yeah, but at first it was going to be part of the Last but of Us too, and then they yeah. and then they were like, "No, we're going to make it its own thing," kind of yeah. like Grand Theft Auto did. Yeah, uh, that was uh, a poor decision that ultimately led to this decision. Right, but I think this is a better decision than releasing a game releasing a game that could potentially have bad ramifications for the studio i understand the concern about becoming a live service studio Mm -hmm. but just don't become that (laughs) just release the game and then also don't become a solely live service studio i don't think i think there's a way to do both i don't think it's that easy in the kind of like climate that games are being made in where like games have to either make all the money or risk you know having the studio get shut down mm-hmm. it would have become too easy to like pour all their resources into this nobody's shutting down naughty dog if they have a failure no one's coming after naughty dog to shut them down mm, i don't know people in the chat are saying final fantasy good point what about final fantasy they have every other game is an online game is an mmo no not every other i'm saying a lot of their games are they MMOs. have they have two mmos okay fine they have 11 and 14 fine and i feel like those are different because like those are specifically designed from the ground up to be mmos they're not you know tacked on features to the main game that like got too big you know what i mean yeah i mean this is supposed to be its own game right it was supposed to be an add-on feature to last of us 2 yes yeah and if they were gonna cancel it completely it should have been yeah (laughs) so are mmos the same as live service I don't I don't even know what live service means anymore. Yeah, I mean technically no. Well, I don't know. No, there's a di- cuz like a game like Avengers or Gotham Knights and well, like games- When we think of live service, we think of Avengers. But I think live service just means they're constantly changing it and 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 uh doing work on it and giving it assets and stuff. It's out and they're constantly updating it. So. Yeah, it's out and they're con- they're they're live updating it. Yeah, because like they they add missions, they add levels, and they add things for you to purchase. So by that definition, MMOs are live service. Right. Uh, battle royales are live service. Mm-hmm. Anything that's online that has constant updates would be a live service game. All MMOs are live service, but not all live service are MMOs. Wait, say that again. All MMOs are live service, but not all live service are MMOs. Oh, yeah, ab- absolutely, yeah. 
I, I got blindsided because Kodo Kestis in the chat says, Hey, Bob and Will, I'm actively having my first allergic reaction and now in the ER. Let's fucking go. <laughs> sandwich was very good, though. <laughs> He's allergic to sandwiches? What kind of sandwich? <laughs> What kind of sandwich so we can avoid it? I hope you I hope you I hope you make it out. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this is not your last Twitch stream <laughs> that you're watching. <laughs> Holy shit. Um Is Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel a live service game? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you buy cards? Because if you pay money for cards, then yeah, it's a live service game. Wouldn't peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer or player Hosted lobbies help alleviate the cost. Well, yeah, but, but there's a lot more to it than that. I just, I just, I miss the days of like when a multiplayer game was literally just, you know, log online, select your play mode, pick a server pick, that's in some guy's garage. Yeah, and just go. Like it doesn't have to be all this stuff. You don't have to like get your friends together and all this nonsense. I got to say though, back in the day, playing games online was a shit show. Yeah. Some games required you to open ports on your router. <laughs> some games had all these different servers and some of them had custom levels and shit. And some of them had normal levels and yeah. you had to navigate all of those. I don't That's know what I prefer. The best multiplayer was just when you go to your friend's house and you just do four play script split screen on the TV. Yes. Uh, Kodo Kesta says it was some pesto turkey sandwich that had pine nuts in it. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful about nuts. Have it, have, have it a really fucking bad time. Having a really bad time. I feel like they should. That's got to they gotta, they gotta say. Yeah. Normally they're supposed to say. A turkey pesto sandwich, I wouldn't assume it has nuts in it. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. Thank you, Will, for letting me know to be careful with my nuts. <laughs> As he, because he, he, he didn't know. You just wanted to make sure yeah. you knew to be careful with pine nuts. Yeah. Uh, apparently, <laughs> nut allergies are just as common as shellfish allergies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you have the other. You have, have the, the shellfish one, yes. allergy. Yes. So he he can relate, although he's never been hospitalized. No, not yet. Not yet. Twenty twenty four might be my year. <laughs> All right, we'll plow through some more of these. Okay. Uh, Kojima making a movie. Finally. Thanks to a leak. Was this a leak? It started off as a leak. It was a t-shirt uh -huh. that oh, showed up right. in the store of A24. Right. That, that said uh, Death Stranding A24 t-shirt. Yeah. Because there's a uh, A24 logo in the Death Stranding style with like a stripping. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Death Stranding, the wildly popular 2019 action game from creator Hideo Kojima is coming to the big screen. A24 is teaming with Kojima Productions uh, to develop a live action film adaptation of the title, which has sold over 5 million copies and has a reputation as one of the best video games of the 21st century. Does it though? Uh, the, the announcement of death of a Death Stranding live action movie comes just ahead of Kojima Productions' eighth anniversary on December sixteenth. A synopsis from the two companies reads: The film promises to delve into the mysteries surrounding the apocalyptic event called the Death Stranding, which blurred the lines between life and death and brought forth nightmarish creatures into a world on the brink of collapse. A24 was born into this world around 10 years ago. Their presence is singular within the industry. They are like no other, Kojima said in a statement. Their films, the films they uh, deliver to the world are high, are high quality and innovative. I have been attracted to their creations and, and they have been even inspired my own work. Their innovative approach to storytelling aligns with what Kojima Productions has been uh, doing for the last eight years. Now we are making a Death Stranding movie together. I'm excited for it. I mean, the j the joke is always that like Kojima wants to direct movies, but like the problem is he makes games. Yes. So I mean, I think he's goddamn close to making a movie. I feel like this this is his shot. Yeah, this is his I, shoot shot, kid. I kind of wish it was a unique experience, uh, but I think that Death Stranding would lend itself well to a movie because it's it's barely a game. <laughs> well, he says there are a lot of game adaptation films out there, but what we are creating is not just a direct translation of the game, 
The intention is that our audience will not only be fans of the game, but our film will be for everyone who loves cinema. We are creating a Death Stranding universe that has never been seen before, achievable only through the medium of film. It will be born. So I think it helps that he's working on it. Like, yeah. uh, part of the reason why The Last of Us was so good is because uh, Neil Druckmann worked, right. worked on the show. And I think, you know, the fact that Miyamoto had a hand in the Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Like, help that out a lot too yeah so i think this has good potential to be to be very good mm-hmm. i i think kojima shows himself to be a a, a, a pretty decent filmmaker yeah so and it, he seems to be like even like well respected in hollywood like all the actors he gets for the games you know you got people like del toro uh singing his praises left and right yeah so, I, it i've liked kojima for a long time but when Death Stranding was first shown off, it was uh, like nothing I've ever seen before right. in any medium. It was like so out, out there. And yeah. and I think that should be experienced by a lot of people. Like I, sh- I shared the first trailer. It was like eight minutes long. I shared yeah. it with everybody that I knew who isn't into video games. Yeah. I was like, this is the weirdest thing you will ever t- See, yeah. like, I know you're never gonna play this game, but look at how fucked up this is. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think I think this will be good. I I need to. I actually just rebought Death Stranding on Steam because I want to play it on the Steam yeah. Deck. Uh, I have to start from scratch, but I think it'll be worth it. Um, because I never beat it. I got uh, I played like ten hours of it, but I want to play. Uh, well, I just looked on how long to beat. Apparently, it's a forty hour game. It's long, yeah, and it's it's a little boring. Yeah, because you're just walking around a lot of it. But uh, I enjoyed what I played of it. It's just it's you know it's, yeah. it's hard to be motivated to play <laughs> more of it. Also, it's like you know you'll be walking around and then all of a sudden hour long cutscene. You know, yep. and that's hard to feels right. That's hard to you know yeah. it's hard to do. Uh, update from Koto Kestis. He said, uh, "I guess I could have I should have consulted the pesto experts in the Wolf Den chat." <laughs> <laughs> they're pine nuts and pesto i wouldn't have known that i think so yeah i'm a pesto expert basil pesto recipe oh, let me scroll all the way down <laughs> toasted pine nuts one cup oh man no more pesto for you yeah now you know i feel like if you're allergic to nuts I'm, you're gonna you're gonna find out soon. Buddy of mine has like has like a pretty bad nut allergy, and he had to like go to he had to do like a a presentation for work, like going through an allergic reaction. <laughs> like, like like what happens if he gets an allergic reaction? No, like he no, like he was doing his job, and he had a cookie before that he didn't oh. realize had nuts in it, <laughs> and he gave the presentation, and afterwards he immediately went home. <laughs> oh no! And just like waited it out. <laughs> All right, let's hear about Activision Blizzard's sexual harassment lawsuit. Yeah, I bet you forgot about that. (laughs) Uh, California Civil Rights Department has reached a settlement with Activision Blizzard that will see the company pay tens of millions of dollars in damages to women for unfair pay and treatment. But as part of the settlement, the CRD has dismissed its own allegations of frat boy culture of widespread and uh, systemic sexual harassment at the company. Uh, According to the CRD's news report, Activision Blizzard will pay almost $55 million in damages to settle the suit. That is nothing. Of which $45.75 million will be used to directly compensate women who were denied promotion or opportunities, pay less than men for uh, similar work, or otherwise discriminated against at the company. The remainder will cover legal costs with with any excess going to relevant charities. Activision Blizzard, which since the lawsuit uh, was filed in July 2021, has been acquired by Microsoft, will also be required to retain an independent consultant to review its compensation and promotion policies and to continue its efforts to improve comp- to improve representation in its workforce. But the settlement, which still has to be approved by the court, has also required the CRD to make a diff- to make a major climb down. Its suit made alarming claims about a pervasive frat boy workplace culture at Activision Blizzard and constant sexual harassment of female employees there. The allegations were the focus of media coverage at the time and prompted a reckoning within the company, resulting in the departure of of many senior staffers 
and in the wider industry. The CRD has now withdrawn these claims. No court or any independent investigation has sustained any allegations of that there uh, that there has been systemic or widespread sexual harassment at Activision Blizzard. The text of the agreement reads. The settlement also clears Activision Blizzard's board of directors and notable idiot Bobby Kodak of <laughs> acting improperly uh, with regards to the handling of any instances of workplace misconduct. The withdrawal of this element of California's suit is likely to raise some eyebrows given the storm of controversy that it created and and the many heads that rolled at the company as it cleaned house in the following months. And then uh, Activision uh, re released a statement welcoming the settlement and blah, blah, blah. Uh, this isn't the first time Activision Blizzard had reached a multi-million dollar settlement with a government body over equal opportunities in the workplace. In September 2021, it committed to create an $18 million compensation fund as part of an agreement with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and in a tangentially related case, the company agreed to pay $35 million in February of this year to settle the Securities and Exchange Commission's charges that it broke government rules on whistleblower protection and investor disclosure related to its handling of these cases. I mean, Activision Blizzard was bought for $79 billion? $70. $70 billion. Yeah. Uh, so what's $55 million? Yeah. You know? It's nothing. It's nothing. They were, uh, it was announced that that Activision Blizzard deal, uh, it was announced that the Microsoft deal of buying Activision Blizzard was going to go through or was in talks of going through right after this settlement was Well, happening. Microsoft announced their intention to buy Activision right after all this news came out. Yeah, like within that's what months. I'm saying. Yeah. And that seems like a good thing to me because uh, it seems like Activision Blizzard was being run by idiots. Yes. And uh, I feel like Microsoft could help with that. Yes. Uh, so hopefully all of these uh, things that they're imposing aren't even necessary anymore. Yeah. But uh, still. Hopefully like it's a clean slate now going yeah. forward. But it still should... Uh, this should be a wake up call for a lot of the industry. Yes, uh, absolutely. If yeah. the state of California is like, "Hey, you have too many sexual harassment cases," mm -hmm. that's a kind of something that should be. But I think it is disappointing that they withdrew their claim about like the frat boy culture, because I feel like that was a that was a concession they had to make in order to get Activision to give anything. Yeah. In this case. Mm -hmm. Toto Kestis, uh, how was the pesto though? Because I mean, you might not, you probably haven't had pesto before. It's amazing. Because like, I'll be honest with you, yeah, yeah, I, I'm allergic to shrimp, but like, shrimp tastes good. See, I don't like a lot of sauces or spreads. Right. Pesto slaps. Pesto is good. So, yes. Maybe get some nut-free pesto yeah. if you enjoyed the raw. Or maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's worth the hospital stay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Also, Kodo Kestis, thanks for gifting a sub to Jay Cannon. Oh, you got medical bills to pay, man. Don't be giving yeah, us man. money. Uh, all right. Next, Hogwarts Legacy, maybe the first best-selling game, not Call of Duty or Rockstar. Yeah. Okay. Hogwarts Legacy is really? the is the U.S. market's best-selling game of the year so far, according to data covering up until the end of November. But a newly released Call of Duty is on its tail, according to the data published by. Uh, the former NPD group, uh, executive director uh, Matt Piscatella, Modern Warfare 3 is already the U.S.'s second best-selling game of the year, despite launching alongside the series' worst reviews ever. You're part of the problem. <laughs> uh, that means that Modern Warfare 3 already has outsold Tears of the Kingdom in the U.S., as well as Spider-Man 2, uh, Madden 24, uh, Diablo 4 in just its first week of sales. Call of Duty is regularly the U.S.'s best-selling game annually. Should Hogwarts Legacy remain on top, however, it will be the first non-Call of Duty or Rockstar game in 15 years to top the U.S. sales charts since we play in 2008. Holy shit. Globally, Hogwarts Legacy has surpassed 15 million sales um, and grossed over a billion dollars according to Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, the rest of the year's current top 10 lists... Um, Include uh, Call of Duty. Include last year's Call of Duty release, Modern Warfare Two, uh, Jedi Survivor, Mortal Kombat One, Starfield, and Resident Evil Four. Star Ocean's up there. 
Oh, wow. Look at that. Number 17. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 was the best-selling game of November, marking the fifth consecutive year that Call of Duty, uh, that a Call of Duty title has topped this month. Red Dead Redemption 2 ranked number one in November of 2018. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy ranked third in November, driven by the launch of the Switch version. Uh, yeah, so there you go. It's very possible that Hogwarts Legacy could be the best-selling game of the year for um, it not being a Call of Duty game. That's crazy because of all the controversy it had. Like we we saw it from the games industry point of view, and everybody yeah. like didn't want to like it. Yeah, but people like Harry Potter. People like Harry Potter enough to like overlook a lot of things. <laughs> well, yeah. I think I feel like most people like people are playing this who don't play a lot of video games, right? And I think that uh, the greater uh, audience doesn't realize any of the problems that are happening, like on Twitter and shit. Yeah, there's always like, so there's something to be said about like people who just like the thing and not necessarily like the person who made, like aren't aware about what the person who made the thing yeah. might have done or like the greater context of it. I think J.K. Rowling's, uh, Rowling? 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 J.K. Henry Rowling. Rollins, J.K. Rowling, J.K. Rollins. Yeah, uh, all of her controversies were Twitter. They were derived from Twitter, and well, people, they start there, and, and then they get reported on it, right? Stuff. But still, like, I, no people aren't looking at that. Like the greater audience is like we are. We are involved right. in it. And we're in that bubble, and we're like, oh shit, this is fucked up. But the people who are in Target and they're like, oh, there's a Harry Potter game, right? Yoink! Like they don't know. They yeah. have no idea. That said, again, still advocate just stealing the game. <laughs> also, Harry Potter's dumb. <laughs> it's always been dumb. Never been good. Uh, not a, not a lick of good stuff happening. Feel there. bad, like when when our first child was born, like people were like sending us Harry Potter stuff, and I'm, and I was just my wife and I would just look at each other and go like, we are clearly a Star Wars house. Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> Other problems with Star Wars, but. <laughs> but it's better. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's all story related. <laughs> I went to Harry Potter World in uh Japan. Yeah. Dumb. I've been to it's Harry Potter dumb. World in Florida. Yeah, I did. I went there too. I, that, like there are things to like about Harry Potter. I just don't name one. <laughs> <laughs> name a one. Alan Rickman. There are okay. there are things to like about it. It's just I've never like been invested enough to like want to go out and like learn more about it also the fifth movie is bad and it was bad enough to turn me off from the franchise that, in general is that the last one no it's the second to last one no there are eight movies so it's, it's eight a, movies yeah. well there's seven books and then they split the, the last book into two movies so now every young adult uh film series has to split the last movie into two that sucks I saw oh. like random Harry Potter movies. I was like dragged to like yeah. some random ones, and they were, uh, they they're they're not. Cool. I did, I never read the books because reading is for squares, and I was a cool kid who played video games. I tried. I tried to read the yeah. first one, and I couldn't do it. Instead, I read Holes. <laughs> I I invested in Holes. There you go. So I I saw the first movie like all right this isn't bad I saw the second movie oh this also isn't bad I saw the third movie oh this one's weird but still not bad fourth movie oh this is not bad I saw the fifth movie why the why do I not like this movie why is this 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 and happen and every time I would ask why I didn't understand like I would ask somebody to explain the movie their answer was always did you read the book <laughs> and it always had the tone of did you read the book you fucking idiot yeah and I'm like. That like pissed me off so much. I like haven't gone back to it. No, I'm watching the movie. Yeah, I like, shouldn't, you have shouldn't have to have read to do the homework book. in order to understand what's going on in the movie. Although and I, the same goes for Marvel, by the way. I was gonna say, Marvel and Star Wars. When people are who watch the movies bring up some shit, yeah, a lot of times you're like, well, in the book or in the in this <sighs> canon, this thing happens. Isn't that cool? And you that's know? actually worse in Star Wars because there'll always be somebody go. Well, did you read this shit book, that doesn't matter this at book all. <laughs> from 1995 that never was technically canon, but we all called it canon anyway because yeah. nobody told us not to. But that was the fun of Star Wars was all this weird shit that happened outside of the movies. Yeah. 
Also, Lord of the Rings, not good. No, uh, no, <laughs> fuck you, Lord no, of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, nah. Lord of the Rings kicks ass. Nope, I will not. Not good. No. Alan Wake Two, Max Payne voice uh, actor, yes. James now, McCaffrey. Uh, sad news, serious face. Today we mourn the loss of another iconic and irreplaceable talent, James McCaffrey, actor and the voice behind the titular character of Max Payne in the beloved neo noir shooter series has passed away he was 65 years old news of mccathery's passing first came from instagram when actor kevin dylan of blue bloods and entourage shared a picture of the two stating rest in peace james mccaffrey we were lucky to have known you my best friend you will be missed uh shortly who was he in alan wake uh having starred most recently in alan wake 2 as alex casey the max Payne like detective who accompanies sage anderson and appears to Alan Wake in dreamlike versions of In the Dark Place. McCaffrey also lent his voice to the role of Zachary Trench in Remedy's Control, but of course, many in the games community will likely first introduce to him during his pitch-perfect performance as the broken former detective Max Payne in all three games. That sucks. Yeah, it's it's very sad. I didn't, you know, he was, um, like his Max Payne, like the article said, his Max Payne was pitch-perfect. He had like the exact delivery you would want for a cop who's like pushed past the edge and just keeps going further mm-hmm. and further into the abyss it's one of the it's honestly one of the best performances in all video games and it's unique because like you know it's it's a wholly original creation in games like and like McCaffrey has like a, had like a role had like a career in like TV and films and stuff but he's mostly known for like max Payne and his video game work it's not like uh michael ironside he's mostly known for sam fisher but he's got like an illustrious career in film like james mccaffrey was like really the first i don't want to use the word casualty but he's like the first like video game voice act like solely video game voice actors like pass away and it's like it, like the the gaming like industry is like unique in that sense because it's still so young, mm-hmm. especially like voice acting in game. Uh, next news is Google gives Stadia controllers more time to switch to Bluetooth. Remember that? Yeah, I did mine like when it first happened. It is currently sitting on the floor of my office. Uh, Stadia controllers are great. Yeah, they're very good controllers. I don't know why they're limiting this. It's so weird. I know. If you haven't enabled Bluetooth on your Stadia controller yet, you don't need to rush. Google has extended the deadline for its controllers uh, for when its controllers will no longer work wirelessly from the end of this year to December 31st, 2024, as shown on its website via Wario64. After Google announced the discontinuation of its Stadia cloud gaming service last year, the company said it would let its controllers live on as wireless Bluetooth Bluetooth controllers for compatible PCs, Macs, phones, and other systems. It also rolled out a special web-based tool in January to let you activate the Bluetooth on your Stadia controller. Google previously gave users until December 31st of this year to complete the switch, but the extra time means that people will have more of a chance to convert their controllers if they haven't already. The controllers will only work via wired USB. The controllers will only work as wired USB controllers if Bluetooth isn't switched on by the new deadline. So they originally worked as Wi-Fi controllers. Yes. So uh, that's why this has to happen, but it should have been an option to be... Well, it's... I mean, it's weird that you have to go through all this rigmarole to switch on Bluetooth. I understand a little bit because they want you to use the Wi-Fi. Yes. So... Your first instinct would be to connect it to your computer Mm -hmm. through Bluetooth, but you're not supposed to do that. Right. So, uh, I mean, they could just yell at you. They could just, in the Stadia app, they could just say, hey, it looks like your control is connected through Bluetooth. We're going to connect it through Wi-Fi instead because it'll be better. That's how they should have done. Can you say that again, Wolf, then? No. I have no (laughs) idea what you want me to say again. No. Anyway. Uh, hey, that's all the news. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Uh, it's time for this. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Uh, Tweet of the Week time. This is from our friend Jerry Meehan Jr. And it says, the Sparrow flag. <laughs> uh, good one. And it is the Italian flag. I, I actually told him to tweet that. <laughs> I put it, I put one in. Okay. Got dueling yeah. tweets of the week. Uh, this is 
What should it's, I a read? Quote, it's a quote you, tweet. You, you do it. Uh, first, uh, apparently, this is from Jezebel. Uh, as Taylor Swift travels to outer heaven for her birthday, uh, Travis uh, Kelsey stayed in the end zone. Because, uh, you know, that's uh, Taylor Swift dating a football guy. Well, she went to outer heaven. So What the uh, fuck is outer heaven? I don't know. Aside from... Metal Gear. Aside from know. being in Metal Gear. Apparently she's part of the Diamond Dogs. <laughs> so the quote tweet is uh what's his name? Raiden yeah. from uh Metal Gear 2. But it says 1987 Konami's version. <laughs> uh yeah, what is Outer Heaven? I don't know. I Outer Haven. Well, there's two isn't no, there there's two? two? There's Outer Heaven and Outer Haven. Yeah. It wasn't Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven was Big Boss's dream. That was the original. Outer Haven is something else. Outer Haven is the big, uh, like, hella carrier, isn't it? Is it? From Metal Gear 4. And Outer he Heaven is the, is the tanker. Is the oil, is the big oil tanker. No, Outer Heaven... Well, there's a number of different, there's a number of different, now I'm on the Metal Gear wiki. Outer <laughs> Heaven referred to a number of concepts uh, that all pertain to Big Boss's dream, which involved ending the abuse and exploitation of soldiers by the world's governments. Outer Haven is from 4. I know that because we have Metal Gear Risk. And that is, <laughs> that is yes. And I think one oh, of the countries right. yes, is, is Outer Haven. And it's yes. a boat or and it something. And it moves around yeah. the game board, yes. Yeah, it's a big, like, ship. Yes. I called it a helicarrier, but I don't think it is. I think it's no, a, I think it's, it's, a, I think it's a ship. It's a yeah. ship. I thought it was just Outer Haven. No, no, no. No, Outer you, uh, you are mistaken. Yeah. There's also Outer Heaven. There's a lot there's a lot of Outer Heavens. I think the big oil refinery that you're on in Metal Gear 2 is called Outer Heaven. No. And isn't that what Big no. Boss bi or Venom no, Snake Metal built? In Metal Gear 2 or Metal Gear Solid 2? Oh, Solid 2. I'm talking no, about that's two. called, that's Big Shell. Oh, right. Right, right. Yeah. Now, Outer Heaven was just like whatever location Big Boss was in uh, to create like the perfect place for soldiers. Okay. Yeah. So it was Zanzibar land. It was South Africa. It was when he was part of the... Military Sans Frontiers. The the base in Metal Gear Solid Five is called Mother Base or Seychelles. <laughs> okay, yeah, and then I think, yeah, after awakening in the hospital in Cyprus, the uh, big boss was reacquainted with his fellow Patriot founder Ocelot there. Uh, yeah, and then. All right, we're, we're too late in the show to get into Metal Gear lore. <laughs> we're going to talk to you guys. Also, there's some boxes to the right. Do you see that bag? And this then bag? the box directly underneath it. Give me. Okay. Uh, actually, all, actually, fuck this box. That, oh, the next box. This box. Yeah, that's Retro oh, Fighters. Yes. Stuff. I don't know what this is. Okay. I'd like to find out. Okay. Should I open this bag? Or? You can open the bag. Okay. Uh, we're also going to talk to you people. Yes. Uh, I will open the Discord and go to last week's Wolf Den podcast comment from the youtube channel eric c says will is so young at heart what a goat <laughs> that means greatest of all time i right? know i listen to ll cool jack <laughs> um you watching the burback video is so sick look man you said the burback brothers yeah apparently i know he, eddie burback apparently he has a, another youtube channel with his brother oh i didn't know that Does that sound familiar uh <laughs> Look, man, game recognized game. Dudes put out <laughs> dudes put out good stuff. Okay. Uh Super Dwango. Uh drop the awards from the show and call it Winter Game Fest, like Will suggested, and cut the runtime by at least half E3. Rest in piss, you won't be missed. <laughs> I'm down with that. Yeah, like a lot of people are saying if you want to do summer uh, winter game fest, you do winter game fest and have the awards be something separate. You know, because clearly that's what all the focus is. Oh, this is wireless. This is from Retro Fighters. Yes. We like Retro Fighters. Yes. 
This is their wireless Dreamcast controllers. Ooh. Uh, Those are cool. For use with Sega Dreamcast. Yes. Ow. 2.4 oh, gigahertz wireless I've, technology. I've seen this. Yeah, it comes with a dongle. And okay. the dongle actually is what you plug your, um, your VMUs into. That's cool. Okay, yeah. that's how they do it with uh, wireless N64 controllers. Yes. So uh, I'm assuming these are all going to be that. Yeah, that's the black one. I don't know what other color. They never sent you the PlayStation one. Did they? I'll have to look through my uh, Retro Fighters collection. Yeah. Because those are the ones I wanted. I don't think they did. PlayStation 2? Yeah. They did. Mm. I have other Dream... They have the other wired Yeah, I have, I have a wired Dreamcast one. Don't have a Dreamcast. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, uh, see-through blue. Yes, those are nice. What do you have? Uh, I have I have a thing to read. I also have uh, the regular Dreamcast grayish okay. white. I have a Gully Kit seven in one docking station. Oh, uh, we love docking stations. Uh, supports multiple consoles, including the Steam Deck, the Ally, the Ioneo, and the Switch and Switch OLED. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's actually. a seven in one docking station. It looks like a, a SNES, an okay. SNES. Uh oh yeah that's cool I uh I was gonna say I should put that in my living room so I can dock my PC handhelds yeah but that's not gonna go with the aesthetic no uh yeah, and also one. a Gully Kit Goku wireless controller adapter oh what does that do yeah. uh supports multiple platforms I think you just plug it into something and it'll automatically connect probably just a Bluetooth dongle yeah but uh it works on Windows Switch Switch OLED xbox one so this this i think will make any bluetooth controller work with any console yeah we That's sent cool. we sent you the gully kit docking station for a steam deck and the gully kit goku adapter for multi controllers to multi-platform uh so it's from acnes oh thank you acnes yes. they also sent uh remember we had a whole thing they yes. sent they said yes. they were the only ones selling these a do controllers and yeah. it turned out they were not but <laughs> yes. uh thank you acnes yes uh, Doomy Doomy from last week's Wolf Den podcast says, I like how the Epic Games case is just of millionaires fighting for money. Epic does not have a single damn, does not give a single damn about developers. They are just upset they can't keep 100% of the revenue. If they really care what, why are they not using PlayStation and Xbox because they take 30% of cuts? All in act. That that is a, something that was brought up. Like they seem to only be going after Google and yeah, uh, Apple. I think that might be because that's where the majority of their profits come from. Like the kids play it mostly on mobile. It's unfortunate that uh, the only way that small companies and developers are going to uh, see any changes is if a big company yeah decides they want to make the changes. Yeah. So that's just hopefully good things come to the yeah. smaller companies uh chess two says chess two they made a second one <laughs> the revenge even if a game fixes itself after launch like cyberpunk we shouldn't reward it regardless that's kind of the conversation we had last week i don't think there's anything wrong with a most improved yeah i think it's disingenuous to call it best ongoing yeah because it, it it's eventually gonna stop it's not a it's not an always online game. It's not a multiplayer game. Seven two one zero seven says two hour podcast should have been five minutes max. Please wrap it up. <laughs> okay. I think I read the comments last week and I liked that one. I thought nice. I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we're in the chat real quick. Yes. Uh next week is the day after Christmas. Yeah. Should we do a show? We don't, know, we don't we? have well, what's the week after that? Oh, the week after that is January second. That's yeah, not. That's yeah. That's not a big deal. Should we do a show the day after Christmas? What's there going to be to talk about? There might not be anything yeah. to talk about. Thing. I I literally just come here for like twenty minutes and be like, hey. <laughs> Potentially no show next week yeah. because there literally just might not be anything to talk about. Um. Uh, what do we got? We got uh, Hotter dot com with seven months. Good evening. Good evening. Isn't that porn? Might be. I don't know. Can I, I forgot to ask at the top of the show? Can I show my tits on stream anymore? I'm so confused. Because <laughs> like I can, I could, and then I couldn't. You like, could, you could always show your tits. All right, cool. On, right. on the stream. 
It'll be artful. Don't worry. If you're going to show dong, you got to <laughs> warn everybody. Yeah. Uh, 1995 Poppy, thanks for the 100 bits. My desk mat finally shipped. Can't wait to put it on my dirty ass desk. <laughs> yeah, they just came in yesterday and they shipped today. So I'm actually getting a box of them, I think, tomorrow. Nice. So I'll finally get you them. You should start handing them out for Christmas. I am. Yeah. Uh, this is, I'm trying to figure out which one of the, these are unlabeled, so I don't know which one would be power. But looks neat oh that's weird yeah i mean it's cute yeah. that's an snes but uh oh there how does it work it's got to have a cable there's got to be a yeah, cable missing. there's a cable here so how do you plug the switch in oh wait you got to provide your own power supply yeah but the if the you know it's got to plug in through the bottom yeah oh yeah you should put it do it upside down oh wait look Oh, wait, no. Yeah. Yeah, do you put the Switch in upside down? I'm very confused. I mean, look, it says Switch, but on the back it shows the Steam Deck. We'll oh, wait. Give me that for a second. There's got to be something yeah. hidden in there. This comes up. Oh. But this shows SD cards. Does this come out? No. Hmm. Okay. Bob, did you ever get your Loki devices? Yeah, they're sitting over there. I got too many videos to work on before I do something about the Loki. Bob, did you see Game Pass sub for $1 back? We had that as a story. Did we what? I thought we had that as a story. What? Game Pass is back for $1. No, we did not have that as a story. Well, Game Pass is a dollar. Hooray! If you, if, you, if you need that free trial or the dollar trial. Yeah. Bob, I'll miss you and Wood hosting Nintendo. Thanks so much for all the episodes so far, though. Keep up the good content. Well, thanks. I'll be, I'll be here. With Bob's run on Nintendo ending soon, I am going to miss Will Wolf corrects the Nintendo podcast. It's been a while since <laughs> it has happened. been. It's been hard to keep up. It's been it's just been so many mistakes. Yeah, it's too much for my feeble brain to take. Uh, what's happening? What? You can show off that package the day after Christmas. That page after that Christmas. Page. Uh, oh, oh, because the Gavin. comic comes out tomorrow. Uh, it comes, it comes out the next day. Oh, it's right. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, good. I haven't posted any pictures or anything. Yeah, I have a contraband uh <laughs> comic book page in yes, my house from right now. Friend of the show and illustrator of Superman seventy eight, the Metal Curtain, Gavin Gidry. Yeah, I was showing that off to Mike. But our, yeah. our friends really into comics. He was over the house the other day, and I was like, "Look at all the cool yeah. stuff." Yeah. And then it was cute. I had to Venmo him money, and the last person I Venmoed was Gavin Gidry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss all the Bob memes from the podcast. My favorite is still the Mario Party one. My dad sucks at the game. I don't want him winning the game. <laughs> Just watch this podcast. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> We've been doing this. We've been doing this longer for 10 years. Yes. At one point, it was only a 10 minute podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Barely a podcast. <laughs> but we've been doing this for so long. Yeah. There's so much content here. Uh, do you think they're going to fix the Arkham games ports? They haven't yet. Uh, well, I'm going to say no. George McFarlane says you're not as funny on this one. I, I resent that. <laughs> I'm going to say no, they're not, because Warner Brothers has a history of not really caring about games after launch. Like, I feel like this was just, they, I feel like they did just fart this out. Well, they fixed the Arkham Knight port on PC. Yeah, right. But that was, like, bad. But, yeah. I mean, this is bad, This too. is bad, too. This is bad, too. Yeah, it was genuinely bad. <laughs> I think uh, they might fix it. I, I wanted to get it on Switch, because I wanted to, like, replay those games in, like, a more relaxing setting. But, you know, now I have a Steam Deck. It was $7 for all three games instead of 60 for all three games. So I just did that. Arkham Asylum isn't officially supported on Steam Deck, but, like, you can force it to. And it just runs fine. There you go. I'm a PC gamer now, guys. Yeah, what have you been playing on Steam Deck? Uh, well, I've been having problems, like, getting Deathloop running because of um, I have to do it through the Epic Game Store. I'm surprised you're playing that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get very. I'm like literally past the first checkpoint. Mm. Um, but I've been playing Half Life One. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Still holds up. Shocking. <laughs> holds up very well. You are more calm on this podcast and yell more on the other. All right, we need to fight more. All right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on a Wolf Den podcast where Bob makes different types of coffee for Will, like Will Try series, or Bob teaches Will how to make different coffee and also shows us? That'll be... That'd be a lot of caffeine at eight o'clock at night. It would be. And like, I have, I have a nine to five that I'll have to get up to. <laughs> also make sure the kids are ready for school and daycare. Did you guys talk about the leaks for suicides? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, what's your favorite song to sing during karaoke? Oh my God. I found the best one. What? Uh, next time. I, first of all, I hate karaoke. Yeah. But I, I used to do uh, a lot of karaoke places are korean mm -hmm. and they have uh uh sonic adventure 2 songs yeah that used to be my go-to but now it's gonna be dragula <laughs> and here's the move uh-huh when it's your turn to go you do dragula uh -huh. and then every time it's your turn to go you do dragula <laughs> <laughs> but you make it look like you're gonna do something else you flip through the book you're like mm, let me ah, i got it i got this one i got this one and then it's just dragula again so there you go. It's Dracula. There you go. That's like a, that's like a three. That's like a four minute song. Got to like go through four minutes. <laughs> it's a Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Anyway, uh, all right. Bye. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Thank you for turning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. Thank you for digging through the ditches and burning through the ditches <laughs> and sliming in the back of this Wolf Den podcast. The Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on Every audio podcast platform under the sun, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible.com, apparently. But no matter where YouTube you, music. YouTube music. It just sounds because we're on YouTube.com and YouTube music. Yes. It feels weird saying it twice. We're, ev we're everywhere, but no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. The Nintendo podcast is ending, so we're going to be the number one video game podcast the next year, Bay Bay. Yeah. Anyway, um, I forgot to look at somebody to read. Uh, I guess you're getting AJ. Okay. He's on. So uh, go say hello to him. I'll be back probably Thursday. No, I won't be back Thursday because I'm doing the goddamn mother sucking Nintendo podcast. So there. Taking up my goddamn <laughs> Twitch schedule. So I, I don't know when I'll, when I'll be live. I'll, uh, I'll probably, I don't know. Fucking leave me alone. What's Sunday? That's Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. God damn it. <laughs> Who knows when I'll be live next? Uh Just, have a good a Merry Happy yeah, Holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Um goodbye. Bye.